Hi, this is Don Farber with Vineyard Soft Corporation, and I'd like to welcome you to this fifth training session on query designing in the Knowledge Sync solution. Now, in previous training sessions, we've discussed and walked through the process of creating a record level query, a query that identifies individual customer accounts where their 90 day balance is greater than a certain amount. We're going to continue working with that query for a few minutes. Now, as a quick review, in this query, we talked about the selection of tables from which data is going to be retrieved, and if multiple tables have been chosen, the process whereby you link or join those tables together. We've also discussed the process whereby you identify individual fields of data, referred to as columns in KnowledgeSync, that contain the data you wish to retrieve from the underlying database. We've also talked about specifying the order in which matching records are going to be listed, as well as the particular criteria that records have to meet in order to be retrieved by this particular query. Now the Subfilters tab is completely blank and in fact is unavailable for use with a record level query. Subfilters are used only in aggregate queries which are discussed in a different training session. So let's move on to the SQL tab. The SQL tab will show you the actual SQL syntax that Knowledge Sync will execute, and that SQL syntax is automatically generated by Knowledge Sync as a result of the information that you have filled out in the preceding tabs. Now occasionally a person might wish to manually edit the SQL syntax for a query. And in order to do so, you can simply come down to the bottom left of the SQL tab and put a check mark in the box titled, I would like to manually edit the SQL for this query. Now when you do so, Knowledge Sync will immediately ignore all of the information that has been configured in the preceding tabs, and Knowledge Sync will only execute the syntax that is specified within the SQL tab. Now, in all truth, we do not recommend manually editing the SQL for a query because once you do so, that query is no longer eligible for customer support from VineyardSoft. Once again, if you choose to manually edit the SQL for a query, that query is no longer eligible for customer support services from VineyardSoft. Now, the reason why people feel that they might need to manually edit the SQL for a query is to do some more sophisticated calculations or analysis of the underlying database records. But in truth, virtually all of the calculations and analysis that you might wish to be able to perform is supported through all of the preceding tabs. So what we recommend is before you say that you'd like to manually edit the SQL for a query, contact VineyardSoft's customer support department and ask them if the particular functionality or analysis that you wish to perform can be configured outside of the SQL tab. And that will enable you to continue to receive support services for this particular query. Now the other reason why people might wish to create or specify their own SQL syntax for a query is if you already have that SQL select statement or stored procedure written somewhere and simply wish to utilize that SQL syntax and not go through the process of using the Knowledge Sync Query Design Wizard. And that is an option. You can come into the SQL tab for a new query, specify that you'd like to manually edit the SQL for this query, and simply cut and paste your SQL syntax or your stored procedure right into this tab. There are a couple of cautions that I'd like to share with you, however. Number one, again, I'd like to remind you that if you do choose to manually edit the SQL for a query, that query is not eligible for customer support from VineyardSoft. However, if you've tested your SQL syntax or your stored procedure and you know that it works and you'd like to use it within a Knowledge Sync query, you can do so. However, what we do recommend is before you choose the option to manually edit the SQL for a new query, is that you give the query a description, you specify the tables that this query is going to retrieve data from, and if you've chosen multiple tables, that you link those tables together, and finally, before you put in your own SQL syntax or stored procedure, we recommend that you go to the Columns tab 
and choose the unique column for this particular query. Because there is no way within SQL syntax that you can specify the unique column for a query. And if you recall, the unique column is the one that identifies those records that have met a query's criteria. So again, before you put in your own SQL syntax or stored procedure via the SQL tab, go through the first four tabs. Most importantly, go to your Columns tab and choose the unique column for a query. After you've done that, feel free to go to the SQL tab, select the option to manually edit the SQL for this query, and specify your own SQL syntax or stored procedure. And as always, you can use the Preview tab to test the results of your query to make sure it is in fact returning the appropriate set of records. So that's what we'd like to share with you regarding the SQL tab of a query. We very much thank you for your time and look forward to speaking to you in a future KnowledgeSync Query Design training session. Thanks again for your time.